nor shaft during construction could act as a massive piston with pushing or pulling power to raise a column of water from below ground level 28 meters to ground level. Since two tanks of water connected at the bottom and relying on gravity alone, no external pump, will equalize pressure and water level between them, we know that unless the Egyptians had built a water tower as tall as they wished to lift a block with floating, a modular system of lifting needed to be used by digging down. Any height the block needed to be raised above ground level could be done by adding sections of flotation, although I have two other possible theories that may make sense as well. This diagram shows a side cutaway look at how the entire process would have worked from start to finish. However, there are a few variables I would like to discuss and a few unknowns that I hope to figure out in a trip to Egypt in the future. At its core, what we see here is a very basic hydraulic system minus the pump. In this photo, the researchers propose two methods of moving rock with the flotation piston. The first here is using a lifting float with the assumption that a side tunnel here, slightly below ground, was used to drag blocks of stone onto flat ground over to the float, which had an extension on it that would lift the blocks higher and higher as the pyramid itself rose. 